Welcome to the Happy Mindset, episode number 103. Today's episode is called Hard Skills. So today is all about hard skills. I'm just going to dedicate an episode to this because I think it's really important, well, it's been really important for me anyway, to navigate my life with some hard skills. So when I talk about hard skills, it's, it's any type of skill where you can tangibly see your progress you're making in it. And it's something that's difficult as well. I think hard is actually a good word to describe it because the skills that are hard skills are generally quite hard to develop and get good at. So a hard skill for me would be computer programming. Foreign languages would be another hard skill. Anything where you can get a sense of pride and accomplishment from what you're doing. So I think the biggest thing for for hard skills that it gives you is that it gives you a natural confidence in yourself. When you put in the hard work and the effort into developing a skill, it becomes like a, it becomes a craft. If you pick something that you're curious about, that's difficult for you, it's challenging, but it's something that you can get better at, that gives you a good sense of like progress and happiness and achievement in your life. So on this podcast, I talk a lot about personal development. Soft skills will be the other side to it. So you've got the hard skills, which are more the technical stuff. The soft skills are more the people skills. Like if somebody's charismatic or, or they're just good with people, they're a good people person and they can talk to people well. That's more the softer skills side of things. I found that both are very important. When you get a certain level in hard skills, soft skills actually become very, very important. As an introvert, as somebody who is more quiet, there are ways to develop soft skills that you don't have to be an extrovert, you don't have to be very outgoing, you don't have to be the life of the party. Listening is a soft skill. That's something that I develop in my podcast by talking to other people. And it's also something that I develop as well through writing and through even talking on my own podcast as well. It gives me a reason to listen. So a large part of the content creation process is taking in a lot of different information and just assimilating it and speaking it out. So when you become a better listener, you just have more content to play with. I found from my own experience that when I when I thought I had the world figured out, I lived more in an echo chamber and when I was more of an in an echo chamber, it was harder for me to create more and more content because it was quite limited because the echo chamber is small. So I found as you go as you move forward with content creation, it expands your echo chamber if you're open to like learning new lessons and to to doing new things, to sharing new ideas and to understanding life at a different level. So the hard skills have helped me an awful lot in just keeping me grounded because it's it's a tangible output. You can't like bullshit yourself that you think you know more than you do. Whereas I found with the soft skills, it's a lot easier to bullshit yourself. And sometimes you might even intentionally be doing it. Other times you might have a feeling that you're bullshitting, but you just keep going with it because you don't have any hard skills to... Uh, to focus on but that's the that's the key thing that has given me the hard skills it keeps me humble as well it keeps me grounded so i found from personal development when you're in that world you can easily get absorbed in it and lose contact with reality as well lose contact contact with the fact that reality there's positives there's negatives it's real reality is real there's no like a there's no one-sided universe when you're actually living in reality. And I found in personal development, there's often a tendency to promote it in a way where it's one-sided, where it's a very positive experience and that like you're becoming the best version of yourself. I found in reality, from my experience, you do up-level, you do gain more confidence in yourself, but there's not like there's never there's no getting around like negative stuff in your life or hard work as well. The smart work, I'll talk about smart work in another episode. Smart work and hard work, like the smart work is in like you can do things. You Smart work, the way I think about smart work is that it's thinking at a different level to how you used to think about things. So that fundamentally shifts how you, how you look at something. I'll talk about that in another episode. I don't know exactly how I'll describe that. Like I suppose to give an example of computer programming when you're starting off, you're a beginner. You're thinking at a very, very low level. Like you're not able to think of things at the top of your head. You, you're not familiar with the language. You're not familiar with the libraries. You're not familiar with a lot, an awful lot of stuff. So you're not thinking at a very high level. But as you gain more experience, a lot of that goes into like your muscle memory. So you don't even have to think about things. Like you can, uh, you can start thinking at a higher and higher level as you've mastered the concepts and the different you, you've a knowledge of like what's actually out there. 
in in computer programming so i guess that's the way i would describe it with the smart work is that you're thinking at a higher level so you're not putting in harder work and and more effort it's just that things are compounding that's how you can start work start working smarter i'm going to talk about that in another episode because that's quite i found that very useful to under to gain some sort of understanding of that and it's not a binary thing either i do find that you still put in hard work and effort each day regardless of what level you're able to think at in certain areas because you're not going to be able to think at a high level across all areas of life you're always going there's always going to be some area of life where you're a bit more deficient than another area but with the hard skills i guess the way i think about what i'm doing is it's self-education and when i think of self-education it's personal development and it's also technical skills hard skills i found in when i went when i was in the education system the biggest thing I found lacking was personal development. Uh, but a real a real understanding of personal development. I'm not talking about somebody coming in and not knowing what they're saying or not being grounded. Like if I'm when I want personal development, it's like more about groundedness and it's more about like being real with myself. That's that's what I want, and that's how you can grow a personal development. So I guess the that's what I was lacking from you know in the education system probably wasn't able to understand it at the time so i'm not going to argue whether it should be in the education system or not all i'm doing is providing a providing ideas and thoughts as an adult i'm more focused on adult education anyway this is something that i kind of have conflicts in my mind as well whenever i start speaking things out it feels like i'm critiquing the education system which i am in a way but i'm not by any means saying that what i'm saying is relevant to the education system because I'm an adult and I'm talking about adult, adult education. So I guess that's one something that's always kind of bothered me in the back of my mind uh, because I don't I, I don't want to be that person who's like throwing stones at something and not helping with the solution to solve a problem. What I'm trying to do here is something that struck a chord with me from Buck, Buckminster Fuller. He talked about, I included a quote in my book from him about if you want to change something, build something that makes that thing you want to change redundant. So that's the philosophy that I that I live by, that I try in my best to live by anyway. I found that the alternative gets you nowhere. So anyway, with the self-education, the way I think about it is that you've got technical hard skills, computer programming, whatever you want to learn that are technical hard skills, and you've got the personal development side. So I found without a personal development side, without that understanding of who I am as a person and being introspective and trying to understand life and who I am and get the best out of me as well. I found without that, my sense of identity was attached to my technical skills. And so that would manifest in me not taking feedback well, me not wanting to try new things for fear of failure, me, yeah, just just not actually enjoying the process. I always felt like I was always on trial or something. I think it's like that, it's that exam mindset. It's like I always felt like I wasn't learning something to enjoy it and to, to grow as a person. I was learning it to pass an exam and to meet some standards set to me by society. So that was the reality of the situation when I was growing up. That's a, probably a part of life that you have to go through. But the other side, it's like looking at education in a more holistic way because we can do this as adults. And that's what I want to reinforce in myself that this is how I look at self-education. So in my mind, I'm merging personal development, as I understand it, with technical skills. And so with the technical skills, I think technical skills, they, they help you to build self-discipline. And they help to keep you grounded. Like when you have notions about yourself as a person with technical skills, you'll quite quickly get found out, especially in a program like or especially in a field like computer programming where there's always somebody better than you and if you do pretend you know more than you do you will be found out very quickly by the people who know more than you so that's what i like about technical skills that they do they keep you grounded and i've often questioned like why do i enjoy doing the podcast why do i enjoy why do i enjoy writing with the podcast it's because it's a skill that i'm developing in myself it's something that I actually feel the growing pains from. And it's a good way, as in like, 
it's just going through the reality of the situation, like like realizing to begin with that I suck at this because I got no experience. It's not even something that I naturally am good at either. Like I'm I'm not really I'm not very very entertaining. I'm not like uh, not a natural in front of the camera. But it's something that's challenging, and it's something that I that I want to do because it's uh because it's got meaning for me. It's helped me to understand things at a different level than I would otherwise, and it's helping me to get over my fear of what people think. It's getting helped me to get over my fear of speaking my mind. So and it's a safe zone from doing that too. It's me creating a space where I can speak out my thoughts, learn stuff about myself, and also help other people in the process because what I'm sharing are things that have helped me to get to where I am today. Like I'm a lot different person to who I was 10 years ago. But I've done it in a way where I feel like I'm me. And that's something that technical skills have helped me with. Because like I said, with the personal development, when you do start getting attracted to that area, it's very easy to lose your sense of self in it and become another person entirely. Because that is the, that is, that is the point of personal development. You're not happy with certain aspects of yourself, so you're going to personal development, you're drawn to it to improve those things in yourself, to change them. I found that when you're thinking along those terms, it's easy to think that this person over here is who I want to be and not me. But that's not something that will serve you well in the future going forward. What will serve you well is it's actually it's counterintuitive. It's rather than looking at the person who looks successful on the outside from your perception and wanting to become them. It's more about actually what are the vulnerabilities within me right now that I feel that I'm willing now to look at to become more comfortable with. And that's part of me doing the podcast too. The vulnerability I would have had would be what will people think of me? It would be what if I say something that's wrong, that's perceived in a different way? These are all realities. These things are the reality of what I'm doing. So it's coming to terms with those vulnerabilities and then you're starting to see the person you will be behind the vulnerability. So that's something that won't be sold to you too much in personal development because it's not very sexy. It's not something that a lot of people want to do because who'd want to be sold in a course or on something where they're telling you that you're gonna you're gonna get the chance to actually see the vulnerabilities, the vulnerable side to yourself, the dark sides, the shallow sides. You're gonna you're gonna get a chance to confront all that. Who would sign up to a course like that? I wouldn't have had ten years ago anyway. So that's that's why technical skills have been very important to me because it's given me balance because I'm also just focused on something that's productive in the world. Like when you're coding, you're creating stuff. And when I'm writing, just writing stuff out, it's, a, it's another skill set I'm developing. But writing for me is more of a creative thing. So I don't really classify it as a technical skill for me. I see it as more of like an introspective thing that I do to understand myself better and to make sense in my world. The other thing that's great about technical hard skills is that it helps you to think through things in a sequence it's very analytical i found with personal development in my experience there wasn't a lot of analysis which made it a bit more airy fairy and a bit less grounded so it's combining those two things together so i'm a person who i admire i appreciate people who can analytically think through things at the moment i'm actually going through a phase where i'm just looking for different things to follow now i've gone through a phase of like i've been drawn to the motivational coaches personal development life coaches and all that kind of stuff i'm slightly shift, shifting more towards the people who are a bit more balanced in my mind that they have technical skills and they also understand the importance of introspection of being conscious of raising your consciousness of being more aware of yourself so i do think that there are things that need to be balanced out inside because I realize with the analytical mind, it can only get you so far. It's you're pretty much you're you're inside that analytical mind, so you need a way to actually step, take a step back from it and actually realize who you are. There's a lot of benefits from actually looking at the two paths. So when I was blocked off to personal development, I would have seen it as too airy fairy, too many bullshitters. I don't want to con- go down that path because I don't want to be considered a bullshitter. Don't want to lose myself. I've had experience where I've been manic before. I don't want that experience again. But that's a very binary way of looking at it and it doesn't really help you in the long term. I found that just from going through the process, going through personal development, 
you do start to get a, a sense if you're looking for truth and you're looking to become who if you're looking to become the best version of yourself as cliche as that sounds you will find a balance after a while i think another thing that was blocking me when i started the personal development route is that i didn't have the i didn't have a feel for how people learn how i learn in the real world i didn't have that understanding of the application knowledge thing i think a lot of that was out of whack because again of my experience in the education system where it feels like passively taking in information is you learning you learning that feels like learning it feels like progress but then you look at your reality and it's like nothing's changing in my life I'm not feeling any different i'm not thinking at a different level here as well that was my experience so i'd equated that as actually how you go about learning and so when i was doing personal development too i had this illusion that i was making a lot more progress than i was making in reality it was only from doing this podcast writing had kind of started to bridge the gap but it was especially doing this podcast when I had to put things into my own words, so all these ideas, all these things I thought I knew, I had to actually just have conversations and get across what I knew. And I started realizing quite quickly how much I didn't know and how much these ideas in my head weren't actually impacting my life. They weren't changing my life in the way that I thought that they were. They were just nice ideas. They weren't being implemented. And so... With the technical skills, with the hard skills, that's the mindset that you develop when you're having to, each day, stick to the process, get better at the skill, even if you don't want to do it. Like, that's a large part of the technical process as a programmer. For me, it is anyway, where it's like, this is really hard, I don't want to do it. There's times as well where it flows and it's like, I, I really enjoy it. There's other times, when you, especially when you're faced with a new problem and you're like, I would love to run away from this, to be honest. That's the initial kind of reaction. It does get better over time as you start seeing the state of mind that helps you to solve problems better. I'll talk about this in a different episode. It's a a meditative state of mind I found that helps me to focus on the solution rather than being stuck in the problem. Without that understanding before, that was what was blocking me. It was like, I'd look at the problem, I'd be stuck in the problem. I wouldn't be able to shift my focus from the problem and then I just believed that I just couldn't solve it. Whereas it wasn't actually true. I just hadn't trained myself. I hadn't trained my brain properly to be able to take in the problem, take in as much information as possible, and then focus on the solution as well. So I'll talk about that in another episode because that's something that's been pretty major. It's been subtle, but it's been pretty major as well for me because it just improves the quality of my problem solving, how I feel in the problem solving process. So that's basically what I wanted to talk about today. Hard skills, just the importance of hard skills. That's what this podcast is about. It's like self-education. The way I look at it, it's like merging personal development together with hard skills. And like personal development, I've got no specific definition of that. I'm just using that word today. For me, it's like becoming aware of who you are, becoming more conscious of who you are as a person, because that gives you space and freedom from who you think you are and who you think you should be all the time and and how you think you should be saying things. That's the freedom, and that's where I experience some happiness and some some actual genuine, genuine happiness in your life. So that's it today. Thanks again for listening, and I will speak to you on the next episode.